Good evening, everyone. It's uh, it's a real pleasure to be here, and I, I really want to uh, to thank you for coming just on time, which is the beauty of Japan. Seven o'clock is seven o'clock, uh, and I want also to thank uh, all my Globis friends for uh, welcoming uh, us tonight for this um, professional seminar. Um, I have to say that it's quite intimidating because uh, I looked just before coming. I looked at the past um, seminar speakers of Globis, and I looked at the different topics, and I looked at their titles. And uh, it was about global strategies, global versus local, uh, global human resources, and business cases, and very, very uh, intelligent things. And then the title, it was professors, and chairman, and uh, doctor, and dean Nakamura, and etc., etc. And here we are tonight, and it's just, you know, a, a, a French a gaijin couple, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, no title and, and no big topic, at least on the paper. But that, that's the whole point. We, when, we, when we thought about the topic with, uh, with my friends, uh, Tsuji, Tsuji Hatasan and Megumi and Brian, we wanted to have a topic which is really important for you, something which can really bring value. And uh, we figured out that global strategy and marketing and business cases, you already know some things, many things. Uh, but what's really important is um, you, is uh, our happiness, our work-life balance, our career, uh, the way we act with our companies, the way we develop ourselves. So that's why we chose this theme, which is about career, which is about best of both worlds, which is another way to say work-life balance. And also, we wanted to link it with the companies which support them, which, with the values uh, in our companies, which can allow us to have this career. So in order to do that, uh, fortunately, uh, I'm not alone. I came with my wife, because for the very difficult topic, I never want to be alone. And uh, we figured out that the best way to start, before going to questions and answers, before going to very specific uh, items, was to tell about our story. I probably need to switch it on, right? So our story. This is the world. Um, and this is us, actually, over here. I will tell you a little bit about the, those two monsters here. Um, we, we were born in Paris. We were bred in Paris. We studied in Paris. Uh, we actually met. Uh, in Paris, in our university, or pre-university, we both made uh, um, engineering schools. And Laure, who is here, made a research school uh, specialized in physics and chemistry. And I made another engineering school, which is more into economics and finance and strategy. And then I entered the uh, Ernst Young International, and Anne Laure uh, entered, uh, first made a PhD. I don't have to forget that. Uh, for three years, she became a doctor. And, um, and then she entered into L'Oréal, and I entered into Cartier, which is a competitor of Antlef and Arpels, part of the same group, fantastic juror that you all know. So we were in Paris, uh, both in, uh, in our companies, uh, companies that we chose, uh, L'Oréal for anne -Laure and Cartier for myself. And I will come back after about how we chose the company, and why we chose those companies. Um, we actually had two babies. So that's actually three babies, and that's not pigs or monsters. I know it looks like, sometimes it looks like pigs at home, but it was babies. 
I insist on that because, again, telling our story and after that discussing about work-life balance and careers and international careers and having an international career when you are a couple and when you are a family, uh, you need to know that at the same time we uh, find some time to uh, raise some babies. So we were in Paris and everything was doing uh, okay, actually. Uh, we had this, uh, this good career, uh, domestic for the moment we had the opportunity to go to another country. Actually, I had the opportunity to go to another country. I was offered the, the possibility to go to Singapore uh, for a fantastic opportunity, which was running the Carte business in Southeast Asia. Uh, so I had 24 hours to, uh, to decide. So I called my wife, do you want to go to Singapore? Why not? What am I, am I going to go there? I don't know yet. Do we take the risk? Yes, we do. And we decided to go to Singapore. Voila. In Singapore, I kept on uh, working for Cartier as uh, managing director for the, for the region. And actually, Anne-Laure uh, talked with her company and find, found a way to keep on working for L'Oreal as a freelance in the, the, training, um, the training center. Uh, which is the training center of Southeast Asia in Singapore. And we had, important to notice, a third baby, a third boy. Um, we stayed three years in Singapore, both working, both having a great life. And after three years, my wife started to get a little bit bored in this, in this city. I wanted to resume into a real work in a laboratory, a research work. So she asked for it. She called her bosses in Paris, and she, they said, yes, we have something for you. So I called my bosses in Paris. Do you have something for me in Paris? Yes. So we come back to Paris. 2005, um, we stayed there for five years. I came back for Cartier in a global position, international position, running a customer service, CRM, internet, very interesting. And Alor worked for the research laboratory in, uh, in the suburbs of, uh, of Paris for a real running a laboratory. Everything was great, back to Paris, back to hometown with our families, great works, kids uh, raising, no problem. And then I had an opportunity to go to Tokyo, of course. That's why we are here. And again, I had little time to decide. So I called my wife, do you want to go to Tokyo? Why not? Will I have a, a, a job in Tokyo? I don't know. Shall we try? Yes, we try. And here we are in Tokyo. We arrived here in 2010. Um, I changed brands. I went from Cartier to Van Cleef and Arpels which is another maison of the Richemont Group. I will tell you more about Van Cleef and Arpels after. Um, to run the market here in Japan. And as a matter of fact, when we came here, and Laura had the opportunity to find a job here because we we're lucky enough uh, that her skills were quite demanded in Japan. So she found a job here running a laboratory in the research center of L'Oreal. Looks like an uh, enchanting story, yeah? Huh? Actually, that's a true story. So we arrived here in 2010. We stayed here for three years till now. And the story is not over because a few months ago, I had the opportunity to go to another country. So my boss called me and said, do you want to go to New York? And I said, I called my wife. So I called my wife. You want to go to New York? Why not? And um, actually, she called her bosses. Uh, do I have something for me in New York? Yes. So here we are. We are going to move in a, in a few months to, uh, to New York. I will, I will uh, take over the management of Van Cleef and Arpels in, in Americas. And hopefully, I know we work again for L'Oreal in another laboratory uh, position, uh, management position in the laboratory of the research centers. 
So that's the story. Looks like a beautiful story, true story. Um, we had some dilemmas, we had some questions, we had some sometimes tough decisions to make in this, uh, in this path, and I'm sure you will have some questions after. Uh, it just happened this way. I think we are just lucky enough to, uh, to have this, this path. And out of this story, uh, what I wanted to do with you is to have a few key learnings which can be useful for anybody or key learnings that we learned during this, this whole path. How, how did we build that? How did we build this, uh, this success story, I would say, this double career management in, uh, during those 13 years? The first one that we learned is really to know what's important. That's, that's what we did. Uh, very early, we figured out what was really important for us. And that's, again, that's a very basic lesson, but, and that can work for everybody. Um, what was important for us was to have an international life, to be in positions where we can discover things. Uh, curiosity is a big engine for us, definitely. We wanted to have freedom. We wanted to be in very dynamic environments. Uh, and that's, I wanted for me to be in a large team and to be in a running position for these teams. Uh, Anna wanted to be in a, in a company where she would be high pressured, high demanded, which is the case with L'Oreal. She will talk about it later. So that was the first key. Know what was really important for us. The second key was to find the proper organization. We managed to grow internationally, to grow globally, uh, because we worked in companies, and that's part of the title of the seminar, and we'll dig into that a little bit later. We work in companies which definitely allow that. Um, L'Oreal is an international company, global company. They have uh, facilities everywhere in the world. They have research centers in France, in the US, in Japan, in China, in India, in Brazil. Um, Van Cleef & Appels, part of the Richemont Group, is an international maison, an international company, uh, with uh, centers in most of the civilized country, I would say. But more than that, those companies have specific values uh, which really fit to our own values. And when I said at the beginning that we chose those companies, we chose those companies not only because they are international, not only because they have the jobs that we can do, that fits our skills, but also because it's, uh, they have set of values which fit our values. And we'll come back just after on uh, Van Cleef & Appels, the set of values, uh, what, are very what is very specific about Van Cleef & Appels and why it fits my own values. The third key learning in this, in this path was don't manage your career. We never managed our career. We never planned anything. We never said, um, I'm sure I'm going to live in Tokyo. I'm sure I'm going to live in New York. Uh, I will change a job uh, after three years after three years. I will do this particular job, etc. We never had any career management plan. Uh, we don't believe in that. Uh, but we clarified and express what we wanted, our desires, with our companies, with our bosses, with our management, at different steps. Very early, we said that we wanted to have an international career. Very early, we said that uh, it would be either in Paris, in New York, in Tokyo, maybe in Shanghai, but mostly in Paris, New York, and Tokyo, because that's the places where L'Oréal has some research centers, and where Richemont, and Van Cleef & Appels in particular, has some large facilities. And we say it all the time. Either it's Paris, New York, or Tokyo. Don't 
propose anything outside of cities because it's not going to work. So at the beginning, the companies, the management says, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, be open. Uh, you need to be uh, completely open to opportunities uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, you can't specify uh, one single city. But when you repeat it 100 times, they understand that that's really your desire. That's really your desire. And that's what we did. And now they don't propose us anything else outside Paris, Tokyo, and New York. And that's what worked. And then the fourth uh, key learning in our uh, brief uh, career so far was that we made choices, uh, which means that also we make renouncements. We gave up on other things. We might have had even better jobs. I had fantastic opportunities that I, re that, uh, that I refused because it was not at the right time or at the right place. Anna has also some great opportunities that she refused because it was not at the right time and the right place. We made some choices. We didn't say yes to everything. Actually, we said no to many things. Um, but we gave up on what's not essential. What was essential was to be to have this international career, to be in those places. And what was not essential was other things on which we gave up. So basically, when I said we were lucky in our career, I think we were quite lucky so far, very lucky. Uh, but you know the saying, uh, get prepared, uh, get, get well, pre well lucky, get prepared, or luck is when preparation meets opportunity. We had some, op some opportunities, but we really prepared them. Now I want to talk about uh, values, culture. Uh, because at the end of the day, um, we managed to have a good work-life balance, to have good jobs, to have good life where we wanted to have good life. Also because we have, I think, strong set of values ourselves. And we found companies which can fit those values, those cultural values. And at the end of the day, it's all about culture. The company you work for, the company you choose, it's all about culture. It's not about business strategy. It's not about uh, other things. It's about culture. And the culture is, uh, is mostly values. I want to give you the example of Van Cleef and Arpels. Alors, Van Cleef and Arpels, uh, just a few words about Van Cleef and Arpels. A few of you know it already because I gave a, a seminar one day about it. Uh, Van Cleef and Arpels, uh, probably most of you know the name. It's a French. Maison. Our maison is the other word for brand, but we hate to say brand, so it's a maison, because we are very ar French arrogant about it. Um, it was founded uh, more than a century ago, in 1906. It was founded in Paris um, on a love story between a man, Mr. Van Cleef, and uh, a young lady, Mademoiselle Arpels. They fell in love, they got married in 1896. They founded Van Cleef and Arpels in 1906, their workshop. He was the son of, uh, of a diamond setter. She was the daughter of a diamond seller. Same industry. And that's how Van Cleef and Arpels was built. French plus Vendôme, beginning of the last century. It has, be, it has uh, been a family business for the whole 20th century until the point it was acquired by the Richemont Group, which is a huge group specialized in luxury brands, 20 brands. And now Van Cleef and Arpels is present in uh, most of uh, the big countries, in France, in Asia, in Japan, in America, in Italy, in the UK, in Switzerland, etc., etc. Big presence in Japan, uh, and since 40 years, because we are celebrating our 40 years in Japan. And we do high jewelry, we do jewelry, we do bijoux, we do watches. We love to do that, and, uh, and it's working quite well. And we have strong values, which I'm going to present. And I'm insisting that it's strong values and not mission statement, and not business objective, and not business purposes. It's really values. It's the way we work together, uh, the way we behave as a team together. And we believe that by having those, this strong set of values, uh, 
we can be better with our clients because the way we behave is seen by our clients. When I said I chose Van Cleef and Arpels, and I knew that it would fit my own set of values, what I chose with Van Cleef and Arpels before going to the, to the values was, it was a simple and understandable, under the understandable uh, business, business that you can easily understand. It's not uh, nuclear science, it's not complex deal, it's not uh, super complex finance. It's we create products. We manufacture products in our workshops and we sell those products, those collections, as simple as that. And we make people dream, we create desire. It's very simple. And I needed something quite simple, actually. Second, it's in the luxury business and we have resources uh, to develop, to develop long term. And that was very important for me. I wanted to be in a company which, which sees long-term and not short-term profit. We make a lot of profit and we reinvest almost all this profit into image, into boutiques, into long-term. I wanted to be in a brand with stories or in the business with stories, a lot of stories. And that's the case with Vontlef and Arpels. We have a lot of stories to tell about personalities, about our creations, about our themes of inspiration, etc. I wanted to be in a, in a maison which was which would be a family business, and that's the case for Van Cleef and Arpels. We're talking of a long history. We're talking of a small size where everybody knows everybody, more or less. We are 1,000 in the world, and uh, in the way of working, it is very family oriented. The family is not anymore uh, at the head of the of the company of the maison, but the spirit is exactly the same. It's uh, like uh, cousins or sisters and brothers working together. And it has this embodied value, which are, the first one is be benevolent. Alors, in French, for the French speakers, être bienveillant. Actually, it sounds better in French than in English. Bienveillant, benevolent. That looks completely... Uh, Childish, maybe, but that's a reality. That's the way we behave. To respect our colleagues, to show empathy, attention, to be genuine, to support colleagues, to give them the right to be wrong sometimes and well-intentioned. That's something that you don't find on the website of Van Cleef and Appels. That's something that the clients don't directly see, but that's the way we behave together. And that's very important for us. Second, and that goes with benevolent, we are very demanding. And one without each other doesn't work. You cannot be benevolent without being demanding. And if you're too much demanding without being benevolent, it doesn't work. It breaks at one point. So we search excellence, and that's what our clients are looking for. Excellence in quality, excellence in service, excellence in, in behaviors, creating value long term, leading by example. Then the third one is to help our colleagues to grow. We work as a team. We encourage, we encourage everyone to grow, to adapt to change, and uh, to develop, create conv conviviality, assure fairness, develop competencies, transmit enthusiasm. Again, you might, you might find uh, other companies that say it, we actually live it. The first one is about sharing. Uh, we create an atmosphere of sharing. We share knowledge, we share passion, we share skills. Uh, sharing is so important that we have created a school, which is called L'Ecole, Van Cleef and Arpels. And we are quite proud that this, the, because the school will come to Japan just after being created in Paris, Place Vendôme, the school will come to Japan. It's a school of jewelry. We teach the, the art of jewelry, the culture of jewelry, we transmit our knowledge to general public, something that has not been seen before. And that's quite, it's linked with our identity of sharing and transmitting. We promote change. We love to promote change. We are in a world which is changing a lot, including in luxury, including in uh, products which, which are for the et eternity. Uh, change happens a lot. 
and we encourage and help people to change a lot, a lot, a lot. We are 1,000 now, we were 500 three years ago, so we doubled the size of the Maison. A lot of change has happened, and, uh, and we need to have that in our values. Somebody who cannot adapt to change, of course, has nothing to do in, uh, in our company. And last, it's about communication. We are ambassadors, uh, so we love to share, we love to represent the Maison in front of anybody, that's what I'm doing now. Um, and, uh, and, and to share uh, those embodied values. So that's the six values. And again, I want to link it with um, why, in terms of care management, why I believe my career worked, why I believe I'm happy with my company, as you can see. Uh, because again, very early, I identified that my values about communication, about sharing, about enthusiasm, about transmitting, about being benevolent, about being demanding, would fit the values of Antlef and Arpels. Uh, which I believe is a theme that we can talk about, discuss, debate on, just after, in the, in the Q&A session, uh, because listening to me, you must have questions about your own career path, your own companies, and how you can build also this cultural match that everybody's looking for. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Megumi, then I'm a faculty member here at the Globus University. And as, as you can see, I teach accounting but uh, I, I, I really um, I'm ex expanding my scope into uh, people because that really drives uh, business. And uh, so today I have a great guest, uh, Alan Berner and uh, Mrs. Berner uh, and Laura, uh, to just deepen the discussion uh, about the subject. So, uh, so thank you for accepting this role of being a speaker for this seminar. Uh, so this is first time for Globus to welcome a couple <laughs> as, as a speaker. So it's a historical moment that you are witnessing. It's not a couple therapy. Yeah. It's not a couple therapy. Okay. <laughs> oh, you need a microphone. Yeah, it's not a therapy, but, but we like to have some discussion. And uh, so, um, so I think I'm, I'm glad that you really like the theme. Of course, you are a little bit confused because you wanted to talk about internet uh, commerce business for hygiene, but I said no, yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah well, we had uh, you had some a uh, choice, but I said I pushed it. But uh, I thought this is very important for global business to be uh, a person. I think about the partner and a family in you know from the people perspective. So I'm really happy that you accepted this theme and the courageous enough to talk about yourself in the front of um, audience. And also thank you again for. Um, I really have a great appreciation for Alan for giving birth to a program called Corporate Ministry Program for Globus. So that was uh, fall uh, in 2010, mm -hmm. 2011, mm -hmm. 2011. Correct. Yeah, so Alan approached to Mr. Hori, the president of Globus University, and just to discuss how you can uh, co uh, cooperate, right? Linking. I, I saw. Yes, I told this story already. I saw uh, Holly San's interview in, was it in Japan today? It was just after uh, March 11th, like it was in April, and I found it completely fascinating. I didn't know Globis, I didn't know Holly San, but I was again fascinated by this interview, by his vision about, uh, about Japan, about how to rebound in Japan, about the whole recovery, what he was doing, and the league with entrepreneurship. So I took my phone, I called uh, his assistant. I would love to see Mr. Holly. And actually we had a lunch together, and then uh, we had a great lunch, and at the end of the, of the lunch, on a piece of paper, actually on the napkin, he said, okay, we are going to do, because I told him I want to do something with you, uh, develop some programs, entrepreneurship in Japan, and link between corporate world and, and university. <coughs> he said, okay, let's do it. That's what's great about him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and corporate mentorship program and etc. Everything was created. Yes. Yeah. So one I one second. One second, right? So then, so the action started. That was uh, fall of 2011. Then 
we already had the course on luxury branding uh, supported by Van Cleef and Apple in April 2012. Mm -hmm. It was one year ago. So it was a, a great uh, creation process, mm -hmm. right? Well, you had something in mind what to teach or tell to the students, and I, I just didn't have any problem creating a course because, yeah, you really was a great teacher. Then you Thank just you. mentioned the value of your company, uh, communication, be benevolent, mm -hmm. All those things is, is a great quality for being a teacher. So I, I, I see that you really fit into your company, but I, you could have been a great global selector too. <laughs> so I'm really, I was really sad when I, when I heard that you two are moving to New York. But congratulations. When is the Globis New York <laughs> campus created? I, I don't mind initiating the project. I used to live in, in New York for five years. So yeah, I'd love to visit you and try mm. to create something together over there. Right, so thank you very much, Alan. And, uh, and Laura, thank you for uh, agreeing to. Thank you for welcoming me. <laughs> thank you, and uh, I am looking at the picture of you. So is that some, something that is taken in Tohoku? Ah, yes, yes. Um, in fact, uh, it's uh, the caravan. It's an association that I like very much. Uh, it was created uh, just after March 11th by uh, Union uh, des Français à l'étranger, which is an association uh, in Japan. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they decided to do something, but they didn't know wha what. And finally, they realized that there are a lot of um, uh, experimented uh, chefs uh, in, uh, in haute cuisine. Uh, in, uh, ah, because, uh, in, uh, there are a lot of uh, freestyle restaurants in, uh, in Japan, etc. And they decided to call all these chefs and tell them, okay, let's try to make uh, nice meals for these people who lost everything in uh, the earthquake or in the tsunami. And uh, they realized also that the kids had lost all their toys, so uh, we decided very quickly to, to manage that. And um, I joined um, uh, this association uh, later because I thought it was worth uh, going on. Uh, and uh, they, so it's very small uh, contribution, of course, but uh, they go in this village uh, to, uh, to, 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 to make uh, big, nice, French meals mm. uh, together with uh, Japanese um, uh, uh, cuisine uh, schools mm -hmm. who help a lot. Uh, we, we, it's really a, a team, uh, Japanese people and French people doing that. And it's uh, just for the, the day, and, but they, they appreciate all the time. And, and we can uh, realize that uh, these people are still there, being in bad condition. Uh, in houses uh, that uh, are cold in uh, winter, very hot in uh, summer, mm -hmm. and uh, that um, everything is not behind them, uh, in fact. Mm -hmm. So it, it's very important to go on, and I think they like, they appreciate that we are still there after two years, in fact. Yeah, thank you yeah. for uh, sharing the story. It is really great to have international mm -hmm. friends helping uh, the part of Jap Japan. And, uh, well, <coughs> Relating back to the global career, does, is that something that you expected to experience? Or the beginning with the earthquake, right? Um, you mean, uh, you mean uh, to, to have a global yeah. career, you mean? Well, you moved to different city, different countries, yeah. and now really experience something unimaginable, I think, sometimes. Um, uh, when I um, when I uh, went into L'Oréal, in fact, mm -hmm. I uh, I don't know if it's your question and just tell me. But um, my, my my point was uh, this was uh, L'Oréal is very famous in France. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, the, the 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 industry of beauty, so it's really fascinating, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's also a company that puts a lot of uh, effort. Uh, it's a company where uh, from whose DNA mm. is a research. Mm. So as a, as a researcher, I really uh, wanted to, to work there. In mm. fact, uh, they, 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 they supported my PhD, so they were there from the beginning. And uh, it, it's a place where, uh, uh, as a researcher, you are surrounded by very experienced people, mm -hmm. and uh, you are given a lot of uh, financial support to, to, to make your uh, Mm -hmm. to, to make your research come uh, mm -hmm. true in a product that will uh, mm -hmm. uh, give pleasure uh, to mm -hmm. some consumers and, uh, and beauty as well. So 
So it's, it was the main reason why uh, I entered this company and that I had no idea that I would travel uh, mm -hmm. one day ex except to go to congresses, of course. Mm -hmm. And, um, and um, the okay. thing is, uh, yes, I was really uh, puzzled when my husband proposed me to, mm. to go to Singapore. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I thought, yeah, let, let, let's, uh, let's take the risk. It's, it's always a, a risk. Here um, in L'Oreal, there is no laboratories for me. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. I tried, um, they, 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 they told me, okay, you can take a parental leave. So uh, L'Oreal is very parental friendly uh, company. So uh, I had this opportunity not to quit L'Oreal, but uh, to take uh, this parental leave. And they told me, okay, you can do whatever you want, except going to uh, competitors. <laughs> <And> <laughs> Of course, and um, and uh, then I work. How, how with many? Uh, so, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but how many years uh, can you take as a parent or leave? Uh, three, three years. Three years. Mm. Okay, quite. So generous. it's uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, mm. I think after your second kid. Mm. So no, no, it was a chance, and mm. uh, so they allowed me to work. So I went. I worked with a scientific publisher, and then they told me, what about uh, giving training? Uh, to uh, L'Oreal's Pépinière, to, 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 to marketing and sales people. And uh, it was a nice uh, experience, even mm -hmm. though I had to quit my, my, my job that I liked very much. So you, you made a choice to mm -hmm. go, go with um, Alan. Then, well, you have to quit the primary job, but then mm -hmm. you found a new opportunity in a different uh, foreign land, mm -hmm. right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Then, well, you can jump in any time into the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> then when you had a chance, but well, you, you went back to Paris, then you had a chance to come to Tokyo. Mm. And, but you, again, didn't have any position that mm. is relevant to the, it, then, right? Yeah, in Tokyo. I, I'm, um, I was lucky. In fact, uh, my company is uh, really open uh, to, um, to adapt to people's projects. And in fact, I realized that maybe I was kind of a pioneer like that to, to ask to move uh, by myself. And nobody uh, since else then, did? Uh, nobody, well, nobody else did? Not so many, because since then, a lot of people call me, mm. how did you do, etc. So it's mm. becoming uh, something uh, very, uh, much more frequent. Mm. And um, and uh, yes, I was um, I was a little worried because there was, there was no job for me. Mm. And uh, but they think, oh, maybe we could uh, find something in the marketing for you. So I was thinking, oh, I have no uh, <laughs> skills in marketing; it would be tough. <laughs> but uh, they were open, and uh, suddenly um, our um, research uh, international research uh, boss. Mm -hmm. uh, decided that uh, there was an innovation uh, lab uh, for skincare products missing. Mm. And so in Japan. In Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they, they gave me the opportunity to build uh, this activity. And so you studied a new, a new laboratory, activity, a new laboratory in Japan, here. which didn't exist yeah. before. Because yes, you were moving to yes. Tokyo with Alan. Yeah. Then they gave you opportunity mm. to start a new business. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it was uh, really uh, a big sign of trust from them mm. and uh, very exciting for me and uh, I had to recruit the, 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 the team and to start from a white page to do something uh, new uh, that, is, uh, that was not done by the overlaps in the uh, US and France and uh, capitalizing on the expertise of, um, of a Japanese supplier who make very fine uh, chemical uh, raw material with mm. which you can make very, very nice product, mm -hmm. uh, taking experience of our competitors that are uh, very challenging for us and Japanese uh, consumers that are also very demanding, very expertised. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, really uh, exciting. Mm. So looking at Anne Lore going through a uh, change, right? Well, she studied, she's studying her own division in a foreign land. How, how did you recall the time, how she was, or how, how did you do anything to support her in any way? Mm, nothing. <laughs> nothing? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I did many things to push her, but not to support her. Um, oh, you pushed her? Yes, to take some risks. 
to take some risk. To take some risk because uh, again, it's uh, it was and I think the story the story is quite self-explanatory. Nothing was written before. Nothing was written before. Uh, and uh, and Laura had to change activities mm. when she went to Singapore. Had to create a new activity when we arrive in Tokyo. Um, in New York, it's going to be even different because she will take another activity which is existing but uh, which she has to develop. Uh, in, in all cases, nothing is written. There's nobody waiting for us in our companies, like, mm. you know, you're going to do that in three years, in six years, etc. Okay. Um, in each of the moves, one of us pushed. One of us was uh, was the trigger, or was the the engine, and and the other one followed. But the other one mm. took some risk in creating a new activity. Mm -hmm. So how how did you feel about taking the risk? Well, probably Alan is responsible for making it happen. But uh, how how did you feel? Like, um, did you did you do that to support him or? Um, yeah, I, I think I, I wanted to allow him um, to, 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 to start uh, this, this, this new life in Japan. He was willing it. And, um, and I, I, I was really, at the beginning, I was a little scared. I, it was very challenging for me mm -hmm. because I was uh, in a comfortable life uh, in France uh, with a job that I did know, knew pretty well. And each time you need to... Uh, uh, reposition yourself uh, to put yourself at risk uh, to put you into question and uh, say, shall I do it and you know when you are far uh, from um, the headquarters uh, you are alone uh, it's, mm. uh, so it's uh, yeah it, it, it was uh, tough but uh, I was very much supported uh, by uh, all me my Japanese colleagues who mm. welcomed me uh, very well and uh, and I think uh, it was the best place to to try something like that because people are, um, know how to work together in Japan and uh, and make things come true. Uh, so uh, yeah, very very mm. quickly uh, some mm. results came. And so is that the loyal culture to help each other and create something together? Mm. Um, is that typical L'Oreal global? I, yes, I, I think it's part of the um, it's part of a culture of a group. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we 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 are trained uh, to to accept the, the difference. Uh, they talk often about mm. diversity. Right. And uh, diversity is one of the value of L'Oreal. Uh, the, 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 our beauty business uh, uh, um, is at the center, uh, of, I would say diversity is at the center of our beauty business because we are uh, working to make beauty for all the men and women uh, all over the world that have different culture, different uh, uh, age, different needs. And uh, we need uh, to, to reflect uh, this uh, diversity. And so uh, that's why um, uh, L'Oreal is very spread all over the world. Yeah. And that's why uh, also uh, uh, we, we, we have uh, Japanese people working uh, to make beauty for Japanese consumers, Chinese people mm -hmm. for Chinese consumers, etc. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we need uh, to, to work together to, to make things come true, mm -hmm. to, to make uh, uh, things uh, efficient mm -hmm. and, um, right. and so yes mm. working together uh, mm. uh, dependently of the difference mm. of uh, culture I think it's something that everyone learns uh, mm -hmm. in, in L'Oreal. So L'Oreal is very famous for um, diversity or you have a famous diversity training right? At the uh, global scale. Yes I think we have a compulsory uh, training uh, uh, everyone all over the world uh, really just to, to accept these difference, to accept uh, the difference of age, of gender, of, uh, uh, to accept uh, the handicap. Uh, for example, uh, we, mm -hmm. we, we try to uh, integrate handicapped people uh, mm -hmm. into our teams, uh, uh, like, uh, I don't know, deaf and mute people or things like that, to accept uh, sexual difference, etc., difference of culture, uh, of course. And, um, and um, yes, it's, um, it's, uh, we, we are trained to that, and uh, mm -hmm. I think it helps us to work better together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So I think you have some foundation mm. to first to accommodate individual needs like hers, like I want to move to Tokyo, then just give me some new job, right? Then if the company had that kind of culture, probably easy to think, hmm, what can we do for her? Right? Yeah, so, so without that kind of um, maybe basics in, mm. inside the organization, it could have been very difficult to just work for one individual within a huge mm. global company mm. to listen to mm. that individual, I mm. believe. Well, what well, does your employer, did your employer any reason why they, they have to listen to you? Uh, Probably you, you are quite important person in the R&D department, I believe. Um, I, I think uh, at, the risk, at the beginning they, they took a risk with me um, because uh, I didn't have such a great uh, experience. I had stopped uh, mostly three years uh, in Singapore mm. and uh, they decided to take a risk thinking mm. that uh, it could be also a great uh, way to develop uh, me and and uh, they, 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 they needed someone at this job anyway to create uh, this activity. So yeah. uh, why not? And uh, you, you are never alone. Uh, as I said, you are always supported mm. by some managers, even if you are far away, by a, a team. Mm -hmm. So um, I think uh, it will happen more and more, I think. Mm. 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 Interesting. <laughs> would, it, would it happen at your group too? The similar thing? Probably yes. Yes. Uh, probably yes. Uh, what happens more and more, and uh, I'm so happy to see so many ladies in the room, is the to give. Uh, I mean, to give chance to people, uh, in general, uh, to to live new experiences, even if the prior experience is not that that huge, but to really train yourself mm. overseas not to stay in the headquarters, not to stay in the same position for long, but to take some risk and go and live new experiences. That's what we do more and more. We do it for, um, for I would say, normal long uh, posting, but also for short posting. What we do more and more is to have like replacement of maternity leave by, mm. by so usually during four to six months maximum, uh, so by, by somebody from the company, mm -hmm. not somebody from external. Uh, to live a new life during a few months. So we had th that recently, for instance, in Hong Kong with uh, somebody who went for maternity leave and was replaced by a young product manager coming from Paris okay. and living for four months in Hong Kong, complete new position, mm. temporary. So that works more and more. And talking about uh, ladies, mm -hmm. uh, women, we give... Uh, all companies or most of the companies uh, you claim that uh, uh, they, they, they want to favor uh, both genders and uh, to, uh, to have equality, fairness in the development. This is something that we really put into action. We have, uh, uh, for instance, our, the, the main um, countries, most, more, more, most of the main countries are managed by women, Advantle van Arpels. The head of Hong Kong region, is a Paris region, is a, is a woman. Mm -hmm. The head of China is a woman. Mm -hmm. The head of Taiwan is a woman. The head of Korea is a woman. The head of Singapore is a woman. The head of France is a woman. Mm. The head of Italy is a woman. Only Japan and America, by the way. Oh. <laughs> Not a woman. I could say the same thing in, uh, in L'Oreal. L'Oreal, uh, yeah, really? Um, our uh, R&D uh, mm -hmm. manager in Japan mm -hmm. is a woman, a Japanese woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have also uh, different brand managers uh, who are uh, women. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's uh, part also uh, of mm. um, uh, values of L'Oreal mm. to put uh, men and women at uh, the same level in terms of uh, op work opportunities and also in terms of salaries. Mm -hmm. mm. So g given the nature of the industry, probably it's natural for a jewelry company or cosmetic company to have more uh, women at the uh, at the top, uh, mm. that's kind of uh, what's good business strategy. Right? It's the mm. good business cases, mm. right, to get the more get closer to the market, which I understand that. But then, so if the case wasn't for you moving, so you coming with with him, mm. so probably you have a new opportunity in Brazil per se, After. right, <laughs> Sao Paulo, <laughs> right? Then she's moving. Then would you go with her? <laughs> 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 
one was thing at a time. <laughs> one thing at a time. Was it too much? Well, Brazil, maybe yes. <laughs> Brazil, maybe yes. No, well, but we, we don't know. But that might be the case. That might, might be the be case, case. In, the, in the next posting. Something yeah. that we take into, uh, I mean, that's why I put the, the, not the pictures, but the drawings of the kids. Mm. Something that we take into account in the whole mm. balance and the thing of the, of the family is the kids who are growing and who need to have also yeah. a place where they can have a good education. Right. Which was also a trigger for us to go to New York because mm. we want to project them into an uh, English speaking environment and probably American oh. or Canadian okay. uh, university. Uh, so for, for that Brazil, I don't know, but maybe mm -hmm. you know in five years, in ten years, uh, we never know. We we are we are and ready. So you're concerned about the, the environment for the children. That's why you were thinking yeah. about mm, Brazil. But then, if it were the right environment, say London. Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? Again, we are ready to make choices and and to give up. And I mean, these two last moves, I was the one pushing. The no next one, she can be the one pushing, and I will be the one trying to find a job and mm -hmm. taking some risks. And it never happens where, where both are really moving exactly together and both have an opportunity. Uh, mm. It's always one pushing and the other one following, mm. but then the other one has to be ready to take some risk. And usually what happens, that's our lucky experience, mm. is that when you take some risk, it works. In fact, if you are ready to, uh, if you are open to a, a large set of positions, of skills, uh, if you are probably curious enough, and if you have a little bit of time, it works. You find something. So the precondition for making or taking the risk or making that happen is to have a set of uh, solid skills that is useful anywhere you go. Um. Maybe if you have a, an expertise, maybe it's, uh, it makes it easier, I think. Uh, mm. If you are too uh, generalist, it's uh, more mm. difficult. But uh, with an expertise, uh, you can uh, move with it. Mm. And I think it's, it was my chance because, unfortunately, I could not speak Japanese. Mm. So, um, right. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. But well, it's probably it's important to have something that it's easy for other people to understand who you are, what you can do on, on the paper so that they can think of, hmm, what can I do to help mm. you or him or probably that's a good, good point. Right, right. But then the idea, so i just just going to call you to uh, Global Career Oriented Kampo, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. but is it a typical in your generation in France, or how, how are your friends are like? Are they, do, do they have the same kind of career orientation? Uh, it depends. It depends? I mean, it depends. We have no, but we have a good uh, number of friends who, who, are, who have this international career as well. Mm. Some others who decided to stay in France, to stay domestic. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality now in, in France, in most of European countries, I believe that a lot of people want to move. Mm. Uh, Especially given the probably financial yes, the economic <laughs> situation, the, mo the general mood is not that good, so people want to move out of uh, of Europe. Mm. Uh, but not only be, uh, now in university, in schools, uh, I mean the, the the young people are completely trained to go overseas. Mm. Uh, they are most of them are completely uh, fluent in English. Uh, it's, it's becoming compulsory now with most of the French uh, schools to study at least one year in another country. Okay. Um, so we are encouraged to go overseas, at least to start the career overseas, and then maybe one day we come back to France. Mm. But uh, it's, it, it's becoming more and more the, the reality. But I would say, and, and now we see with our group of, of friends who have this kind of, uh, you know, uh, hopping uh, career, yeah. Um, we don't even see uh, like uh, overseas and domestic. I see. We see international, and France can be the next generation, the, the next um, destination. Mm -hmm. uh, like it's uh, U.S. or Hong Kong, or uh, it, we don't consider it as a domestic country, but just one destination. Mm. And we—that's mm -hmm. what we did. We came back to France, and then we went to another country, etc. It's just part of an international city. Yes, <laughs> yes. The difference is that we speak the language mm -hmm. better than Japanese okay. and better than English. 
that our families are there. Mm -hmm. But for the rest, uh, we, voilà, it's just one destination, which mm -hmm. is uh, among others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any point for that at all? Or how is it affecting to, well, your, well, your, your two children? So they have to move with you guys, mm -hmm. right? How, how, how is it affecting to? I think if the par parents are well, the kids are well. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not a problem. I, I just wanted to mention uh, the mm -hmm. case of, of a friend of, of a colleague of mine, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, it's pretty frequent. Uh, the lady was in research, mm. her husband was in the bank industry, and he mm. quit to follow her. And uh, they have quit two to babies. Her. Yeah, to follow her in Japan. Mm. Oh. And they have two babies, uh, six months and uh, two years old. And uh, during one year, he took care of the babies. And uh, he has just uh, found a new job uh, in the um, bank industry again at a higher position than what he had in France. So in France. this couple, uh, I think, is a really um, yeah, a good example to show that it can be the other way around. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the man who de decide to, to follow uh, his wife mm -hmm. and, uh, and there, there are often uh, opportunities as we were saying when we take risk even uh, if you do not speak Japanese uh, it, there are opportunities so everywhere in the world uh, I think it's, uh, it's possible <laughs> the kids, uh -huh. yes, are, kids. Not kids are not a problem fortunately <laughs> Good. The kids follow when the parents are happy. Mm -hmm. uh, they feel it, and actually the kids, that's what we observe, they don't think of the past, they don't think of the future, they just think of what's happening now. Okay. So they, they <laughs> don't project, you know, like, you know, in six months I'm going to be in another country, and it's going to be terrible, right. or they don't right. look back. They just, you know, wonder whether they are happy or not just now, mm -hmm. which is quite easy. So uh, we, we never... Uh, we never took really our, you know, move decisions, mm -hmm. uh, fearing that uh, they would be unhappy or etc. We just made sure that there was a school for them. Mm. Oh yes. And yes. Uh, and that's it. The same. Yes, I I think uh, it's always difficult for them to leave friends when they have to move, but it doesn't last. Doesn't last. With um, with. Um, all these uh, internet, um, okay. Facebook, and everything. The kids are more global <laughs> yes, anyway. They are more global than us. <laughs> right. They yeah. have access to many international mm -hmm. kids' channels, so mm -hmm. they are quite happy, mm -hmm. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, so uh, Tokyo. Tokyo is a good place for um, global Korea rented couple to move. Would you recommend Tokyo, Japan, uh, for oh, those oh, international oh. professional to come as a couple? Mm, um, uh, it, it's challenging because uh, most of the time we cannot speak Japanese, mm, so it's challenging because uh, it's not forcibly easy to find a job. Mm. And uh, we have an association called uh, French uh, Women, um, uh, no uh, French uh, active, active French Women. Active, active French, French Women. Yeah, it's in. I know it in French. Active French Women. To, to make networking for women who are looking for a job, and it's mm. not uh, that easy. But uh, Japan is a um, uh, very uh, modern <coughs> country with very uh, high uh, educated uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, people, right. and, and uh, they, they, I think there are really opportunities. Mm. It's also very safe, you know, when you have mm. kids, it's a, it's a big chance. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so, yeah, I think it's, um, mm -hmm. I was a little um, uh, shy <laughs> to come because it was very far for, for yes. me uh, on, the, on the map. and a completely different culture. But yeah. uh, in fact, it's um, the same um, mm -hmm. um, plane uh, time travel than to go to Singapore. So it's not uh, that far from France, in fact. Mm. And just to add on this, uh, I, I think Japan is an underestimated international destination for, uh, for expats, for in, in, in global careers. Mm. And we see that with our friends, uh, our people living in France or in <coughs> Europe. Everybody's dreaming about New York, about London, about Hong Kong, about mm. maybe Shanghai now. Uh, uh, but Tokyo is like 
uh, either people don't know it or people are afraid of it. Hidden gem? Hmm? Hidden gem? Yes, for <laughs> sure. For sure. And, uh, and it's really, I mean, it's the best kept secret. Yeah. And, and um, of uh, course, talking about the quality of life, which is great, mm. and we all love it. And, but even for international careers, mm. uh, the experience we've had in Tokyo mm -hmm. has been for us uh, the, the most extraordinary experience and the most learning experience. And I remember my boss, when he sent me here, he told me, Japan will transform you, and you will learn a lot. Starting by humility, I don't know what he, <laughs> I don't know what he wa was willing to say with that, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if it, <laughs> it was a success. Okay. But um, but for in an international career coming to Japan, I would say I mean in some industries probably luxury cosmetics, maybe banking, maybe automotive, maybe some industries mm -hmm. which which are strong in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it's a must. It's a must because you learn here things that you don't learn elsewhere. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm in accounting and finance. I really love data, like probably you do. Mm. Um, I looked up the Tokyo to website, Tokyo Metropolitan City website. So it had some pays to prop, uh, promote Tokyo as a, you know, in a business destination. So it said about 2,600 foreign capital uh, companies that are in Tokyo. 2,600. I think it's probably exceeding the number in Hong Kong or Singapore, right? So there's so many companies from overseas. And again, we have a great number of Japanese large corporations, right? But then did they ever really reach to the foreign capital, human capital in Japan? That's what I thought. Like, I, but I, I still hear some foreigners coming to Japan, then they had a hard time finding jobs. Mm -hmm. But what, what's missing? We got great resources, right? Language is really yeah. a barrier. A language? Mm -hmm. language. And it's great to have an MBA in English. Bravo. <laughs> Merci. <laughs> is that right? No, but yeah, I mean, the education system uh, mm. in Japan is um, different. Different in what yes. way? <laughs> uh, no, but different in a way that going out of university you're not specifically encouraged to speak English, and mm. you don't have a great experience in companies. Mm -hmm. So for companies recruiting in Japan, and, and for international companies here, mm. it can be difficult. In, I mean, the job market is, is full of super skilled people, uh, but not specifically with a high experience in companies, mm -hmm. and the, the English is obviously a, a barrier. It is changing a little bit. We observe that with a new generation of uh, Young people mm. speaking English, having worked a little bit overseas, mm. or lived overseas when they were they were kids. Mm. So that's that's probably. I mean, there is a lot of hope, but it's mm. true that for the moment, mm. uh, I mean, the, the 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 tough parts to find a job in Japan when you are a candidate or to recruit when you are a company mm. is. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not inventing anything. There's probably nothing new here, but uh, <laughs> English is a barrier. Or so English, English uh, lack of English speaking ability in Japanese companies, or even maybe foreign capital companies in, in Tokyo, right? But it's become so Japanized that they don't use English as a main language. Yeah. In uh, in Japan, we need to recruit Japanese to 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 make Japanese innovation because the strength mm. of Japan mm. is to have a, a, an over uh, strategy. To, to make innovation that in France. So the idea is really to, 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 to have only Japanese people, but mm. they have to communicate, as we were saying, to work closely mm -hmm. with all over countries in, uh, in Asia and the, in France and the United States. And so there is, at the time, necessary, uh, English is necessary. Even uh, if mm. people uh, work together in Japanese, they, 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 yeah, English is... Uh, and we are frustrated because we meet a lot of very expertised people, uh, mm -hmm. and, um, and and uh, sometimes uh, English, uh, yeah, is uh, too much a weakness for them. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, uh, people learn very fast. So, mm. so yeah, so we we all work in English, and mm. so we, afterwards, in fact, uh, in a few years, uh, mm. it's old. So you see some progress mm. as How you, to yeah. Great, great. So I think it's about time to open questions. 
to the audience. So, uh, uh, so there are more wide range of questions that I'm assuming that you have. Then please uh, feel free to raise your hand. And also, it's okay to ask questions in, in Japanese. I can translate so that you know we can we can discuss. So, any any questions? Yes, please. Uh, would you mind state uh, if you can state your name and where you're from? Thank you for sharing your stories. I'm Daisuke Hayashi. I work for AIG, uh, International Insurance uh, Group. I'm just wondering, my wife is uh, working as a full-time professor at the university, and hearing your story, I'm just wondering uh, how do you manage raising your kids, and more specifically, it's a little bit a uh, private question, but uh, how do you do the dishes or the uh, <laughs> doing laundry, the house cleaning, or do you outsource those services to other? Uh, laundry question, so it's probably for me, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but I think, well, first of all, we are very lucky because we had a very nice nanny in Singapore, and she accepted to, to come here. Uh, however, we, we tried really to share the task uh, together, and the kids also participate, but they, they are big now, huh, between 10 and 15. Mm. But, uh, How did you course, divide your... Uh, House chores, <laughs> dishes, laundries, uh, <laughs> cleaning. It, uh, it depends. Depends. <laughs> it depends. Uh, it depends. It depends. Well, it depends uh, my, who is, my, who my is at home. I run. <laughs> it depends who is at home. But then maybe his question is that some some occasion that nobody maybe no, at but home. We, we have. I mean, again, we are fortunate enough to have a domestic help at home. We work quite a lot and we travel also a lot. I mean, like in, uh, in three weeks from now, uh, Anna will be in Paris, I will be in New York, and the kids will be here. So we'll manage this situation, and we have somebody at home who comes during the day and who helps us. So that's... Uh, when, she, when she's not here, uh, we, we, we do 60 to manage, but uh, the kids are big. However... It's and the house is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you don't so hire any cleaning help? The, no? very, uh, for a long time, um, uh, I was uh, earning less than my nanny uh, because I'm a researcher, so <laughs> so oh, it's, uh, it's a cost. Ex it's a cost, but um, but that for your quality of life, it's uh, the better. So financial mm. uh, well uh, sacrifice mm. didn't matter mm. given the quality of mm. life. Mm. Did, did, did yes, did yeah. Uh, the reason I ask this question is that in Japan, since I'm an HR, uh, many Japanese companies are. In, trying to uh, promote or uh, develop uh, opportunity for the many women to be the managing director or the senior positions, but mm -hmm. in Japan, there's not so organized for those uh, environment for women to pursue or the uh, careers. So. Uh, is it working in your company? I mean, you have many uh, women in a uh, managing director's position or managing positions in general? Yes, uh, some women are in finance or HR or corporate communication, but it's not in the business field. That is why the long working hours or the very difficult values uh, mm -hmm. towards the career. So mm -hmm. we have uh, many challenges here mm -hmm. in Japan. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So it was a good discussion because uh, uh, it's cultural too. But then, so uh, I used to live in London, New York. Then I see so many outsourcing opportunity, even for students. So students are so busy writing papers, they hire cleaning help, right? Every student give $20 to, to, the, to the pot, and they hire a cleaning lady to um, do things. Mm -hmm. And that really helped them achieve their academic goals. But then culturally, in Japan, we've, first of all, we weren't aware mm -hmm. that that is possible, and also have kind of sense of guilt like giving the domestic short to other people, like I'm failing as a parent. Mm -hmm. So that, well, that's, that's kind of my feeling. Mm -hmm. But yeah, thank, thank you for a great question. So any other questions? Uh, so that lady, please. Well, first. Uh, well, uh, uh, do you mind, if, if you don't mind? Uh, well, I have a simple question. <laughs> okay. Well, could you mind you try Introduce my uh, Singapore nurse. <laughs> Surely, okay, it's, it's a joke. Well, <laughs> actually, actually, uh, I'm a foreigner living in Japan uh, from another country, and uh, uh, my question is whether the friends, the Paris 
the, the people in the Paris with the, the woman will have the feeling, will have the emotion to would like to work outside or just like to stay like a, a housewife. So, so your, your question is... Yeah, uh, so my question is, is whether the, the people, the women in uh, French, so would like to go out over for work or just would like to stay at home, home. as a housewife. In France, you mean? Yes, in France. Um, in France, uh, most women work, in fact. Most women work because uh, the, I think we are lucky to have a French government uh, that um, gives us uh, a lot of uh, helps to have uh, uh, nannies at home or, or, or we, a lot of uh, daycare uh, system. And so it's, it's far easier. Uh, and uh, also, uh, our, I think most uh, French companies are very uh, children friendly. They accept, uh, for example, that women, even uh, at high position, uh, uh, work four days a week to keep one day for their kid. They accept uh, teleworking. Uh, they accept uh, adjusting uh, work hours. So it's really um, easier for women in France uh, to, to have kids and, um, and uh, have a, a nice uh, w work and uh, personal life balance. Mm. Okay. Uh, hello, uh, or maybe to you too, I have a question. So I went to a conference called uh, Women Forum Global Meeting mm -hmm. in Deauville. France uh, two years ago, mm -hmm. so it was a, a, like a Davos for women. So, uh, so the business leaders and political leaders get together and talk about a society as through women's perspective. Then I met the great uh, French women, the two women. We became very uh, good friends. So then one was in uh, 40s, one was in 50s, I think. The, the lady who was in 50s said, in my generation, so uh, she was at the she she's at the senior position, but she said, "I cannot tell uh, my colleagues that I'm going home to pick up my kids because I look bad." So I would say, "I have a tennis lesson, so I have to leave early." So is that French? In Fr yeah, France. Is that true? Like uh, the women still? Well, n another way, women shouldn't look to domesticated or... No, uh, again, in France, I mean, I think it's quite a peculiar situation in France uh, where yeah. uh, the whole system mm -hmm. encourages women to work and to have a family. Mm. So, too I mean, for... Pressure? Is that too much pressure? Like, why can you say that you are going... No, to but most person? of, uh, of no, the so women good. we know uh, are not uh, ashamed about this situation, okay. quite proud about it because... Every, Again, m mm. most of the women, the professional women, mm. have uh, have a family and uh, they don't have long hours. They come back for the kids, and mm. that's and that's okay for the whole system, for the whole uh, ecosystem, for the fa for for the for the family, of course, for the company. Mm -hmm. But that's peculiar to France. If you take the example of uh, I don't know Germany, which is uh, just next door, the other country, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's completely different. Uh, women in Germany are more encouraged to stay at home and not to uh, and not to work, or when they work, not to have children. Hmm. And uh, because there's no, as as in France, a lot of daycare systems, uh, nurseries, uh, allowances for the, for nannies, etc. Hmm. So that's really peculiar to France. Hmm. So as a foreigner, if, you, if I move to France, I get the same benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I get the same yes. support. Mm -hmm from the government. Mm. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, mm. the birth rate in France mm -hmm. is the highest in Europe. Yeah. yeah exactly. So it's, it's really, I mean, there is a real political will. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a two point uh, something now, 2.3, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And uh, whereas in, uh, you know, in Germany, it's uh, below two, uh, in some countries it's below mm. one. So uh, it, yeah. I mean, this I natality, this birth uh, policy really works. I think it's called the attitude trap by OECD. Like if you think that if you have more housewives, you think that you have more children, right? Because women are staying at home, have time to raise kids, but the fact is otherwise. Mm -hmm. The country where promote more uh, career for women has more kids.
mystery. But the one explanation is that the household have more income. So they can outsource yeah. services to, yeah. to get help so that mm. both parents can mm. go, go work. Mm. And they create mm. jobs. Create jobs mm. and create children, yeah. right? Mm. So that's, that's called attitude trap. Mm. And I find it really interesting. Mm. So Japan, Germany, the other company, uh, countries mm. that has uh, less participation by uh, female workers mm. and uh, less number of children. Well, yes, Japan is very, I mean, we all know it, Japan is very different for that. Huh? I, I still remember, uh, you know, back in, uh, was it in uh, last July, I had uh, my uh, marketing director uh, at, uh, at the office who came to see me uh, and she told me, um, I have, uh, can, can I speak to you? Yes. Um, I have bad news. I'm going to stop working for Van Cleef and Arpels. I'm going to, to end my journey, that's what she said, to end my oh. journey for Van Cleef and Arpels. So, bon, she was resigning. What's the reason? So, um, I'm going to adopt a baby. Great, that's great news. But what is the relation between adopting a baby and leaving Van Cleef and Arpels? Mm. And for her, it was completely obvious that having a baby, adopting a baby, uh, was meaning leaving the company and dedicating all her time to, uh, to, to the baby and stopping, completely stopping her career. Mm. So we talked uh, a lot and I convinced her that it was possible to have a baby, of course, and I was so happy for her mm. and to keep on her career. But that was completely unexpected for her probably quite unusual in the, in the culture, in the team, etc. Uh, so finally she adopted the baby uh, and she's still with us and now she adopts, uh, she, she adapts uh, the, her working time in order to take care of her baby and everything and she's a great professional and everything mm -hmm. is going well. And the situation is unique in our company mm -hmm. and I hope it can be an example and I can mm. tell you we promote it a lot uh, adopting or not adopting, but having a baby, building a family, uh, and staying with the company. And that's, uh, you know, lo lo looking in my teams, there are a lot of ladies, mm -hmm. and we have very, very, very few mummies. Really? R yeah, and that's a pity, and we try to encourage that. But I can tell you, maybe it's because it's the domain of uh, research and development, but in L'Oréal, we have a lot of babies. You do? Yeah, uh, I, and women came back, come back uh, after, after having... So it, the there's a program to promote the comeback? Alors, uh, little by little, it's settling. It's not as good as in France, where we have mm. this daycare center specifically for L'Oréal's baby, mm. where we have this... Uh, uh, with this uh, uh, the, the, the special holiday for, mm -hmm. for mothers, etc. Mm -hmm. But little by little, uh, experimentation of teleworking on mm -hmm. adapted hours, uh, uh, and also the fact that you are not penalized because you, mm -hmm. you are stopping for a few months to one year to, to have a baby. Mm -hmm. uh, it has nothing to see with your uh, work pro project. Mm -hmm. So women uh, do not hesitate to uh, create families. Mm -hmm. mm. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, other question? You have a question? Please. Thank you very much for a great speech. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm Lee from our Grove East student. And uh, I want to ask about, uh, I'm really interested in both of you many times. Lucky. You are very, very lucky. And, uh, you know that to grab a lucky or a lucky no, no, mm. opportunity. Uh, Mr. Bernard mentioned about that the preparation for opportunity is important. So would you give me an uh, advice? I want to uh, ask you about uh, uh, both of you, from both of you. Uh, I want to yeah, hear about uh, advice to grab uh, this kind of opportunity or no, 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 to important preparation for to grab a rocky opportunity or, yeah. Right. What do you want to do? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> right, know what's important for you, right? Know what's important What's for important you. for you? See, you're a great what, teacher. What you know how <laughs> to answer that. <laughs> it's not kind of... <laughs> right. Oh. So what is it? Well, maybe I shouldn't just uh, <laughs> point to you, but... but 
know what's important? You can, you can give some thoughts about it, not answer now. Hi. No, but the, the whole point again, it's uh, it's it's it uh, it takes a great deal of uh, self awareness about you know again what's important for you, what kind of life do you want to live, what kind of job do you want to have, and I'm not talking about uh, one specific skill or one specific function in the organization, but. Uh, you know, uh, do you want some management jobs? Do you want some expertise job? Uh, do you want in international, global jobs, domestic jobs? Uh, do you want uh, high pressure, low pressure? I mean, there are so many criteria to, to look and, and, and to define. Again, I'm not talking about do you want to do marketing or pro manufacturing or finance, but, and then when, when you define those criteria, then, I mean, the very simple advice is just to express it. Don't keep it for you. Go and see your uh, bosses, your management, your sponsors, your human resources, whoever is supporting you, whoever is following you, and uh, just say, okay, that's what I want to do. That's the kind of life I want to have. And you might be surprised by the level of support you will have because the companies on the other side, they want to hear that. They want to listen to this kind of... Uh, of will, they don't want to have, oh, that's, that's my feeling, but they don't want to have employees who are just waiting for opportunities, waiting for something to happen. They, they want to have people, team members, who master their own destiny, right? Who come to see them and say, I want to do that. That's the kind of life I want to have. I want to go overseas, I want to live in Europe. Uh, I want to go into management for this and that reason. And they will help you. Advice from you? I would say also to say um, I want to make a baby. So uh, <laughs> I mean uh, I don't want uh, I don't know uh, a new position now because of, uh, it, it's part of a game as well. I mean uh, mm. and um, and uh, I, I agree with you. Uh, I think companies like people uh, who like who, who know what they want. And uh, if, uh, for example, you feel uh, like going abroad. Uh, I think they might appreciate because uh, you, you you are taking risk to uh, to, to to go to an unknown uh, environment uh, to where you will have to create everything, a new relationship with people, uh, adapt to a new job, a new uh, new place, and uh, I think they appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I think it's important to mm. express oneself. Uh, yeah, can I add on to the point? I am not asked to give you advice, but I like to. Well, I like to share my story. So I have been teaching accounting, right? So my company's expectation is to, to teach a good accounting courses. But then I became so interested in the difference between men and women at work, and you know, we behave differently. Then how can we treat men and women the same way at workplace? Then it just then I just voiced that question, right? I am so confused in why we are so different, but we're treated so, you know, same uh, same way at work. And how can we leverage the difference for the, you know, the, make the business better? Blah blah blah. Then Horizon said, "That's interesting. Study and form a group and probably write a book. You know, do something with it. Right? Then make it a uh, make make it a business." And that was two years ago. Then I was given a team, started the research, and here we are, I'm having this seminar mm -hmm. on, on the theme that I really like. So, you know, it, it, it was quite surprising because I never thought the horizon is interested in men and women issues anyway. <laughs> so, but so, so you, don't make that, you don't need to make that judgment, right? You just voice it. Mm -hmm. Then someone will hear you. Mm -hmm. So probably that's, but that's one of my experiences. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, Kenny? Yeah. Um, hello, thank you. My name is Kenny. I'm a student here at Globis. And I want to ask you a little bit about your kids and children. Um, you mentioned that while having those international career path, your kids were never a problem, right? You mentioned they will always follow as long as the parents are happy. And they don't worry too much about the future because they live, they, they enjoy every day's moment. Um, did you give them like any special support or care while having those international career and path? 
And what did you, what kind of education are you giving them? Are you sending them to a French school in Japan and Singapore and, and in New York, or do you give them a local, do you send them to a local school or? Uh, do they have a specific, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, we love to talk about our kids. Um, we don't give them any specific support at all. Uh, we just try to be there, to be here, to be at home. Uh, I make it specific uh, that we, uh, we come back at 8 o'clock every evening when we are in Tokyo in order to have dinner all together. That's the family time. That's more important than any conf call, than anything at, at the office. Uh, I'm usually one of the first ones to leave, uh, and you're probably also one of the first ones to leave uh, for, from work. Um, and uh, it's just a question of priority. And uh, school system, they go to the French school. Uh, that's one of the beauties of France. There are good French schools in most of the countries. There, there is one great school in, in, here in Tokyo. And in New York, we are applying for them to go to French school as well. But actually, we are still wondering between a French school and an American school or international school because we feel that it would be a change for them uh, not to go to a French school, but to take this opportunity of being in New York to completely open up to, uh, to new things. So it's not decided yet, actually. We need to decide soon uh, <laughs> uh, between, between both. But again, uh, of course, they have, I mean, uh, everything seems super uh, rosy, glamorous, nice, and easy. Uh, we have our moments of stress. We have our moments of uh, no regrets, but uh, you know, sometimes we wonder if what we do is right especially with the kids, but then we see them and um, they speak English. They, we feel that they are quite open to what they see. When we travel in Japan, they can be quite curious. Uh, and we believe that thanks to this traveling, uh, they have become like that versus staying you know, in the same school, same city, same country, same friends, same next to the grandparents, etc. So, um, well, some, they're not that happy to leave Japan. No. no. <laughs> Even if we tell them that your New York is going to be OK, they're not that happy because they have their friends, because they have their activities, because you know, they love to live here. So again, we are pushing a little bit. And we know that the day we arrive there, it's going to be OK. And the day two, they will have some friends. And day three, they will find their activities. And <laughs> day four, we won't see them anymore. Do you have any particular concern or challenges that you're facing? No, I was just interested because, I mean, it's, it's not only for me, but, but for many people having children, I think um, so sometimes it could be a dilemma, right? Mm. For uh, pursuing international career, but what to do about the kids. And, mm. and you, you guys were, I think, lucky that, that the French school was present in Tokyo as well as in Singapore and also in New York. So, but it's not always the case, I think. So. Mm. Yeah. So probably, so, so, so building the global Korea, one element is to choose the city that has a good support, like education, social infra, and so on. That's, that's for us, that's the basic. That's the basic, right? Mm, to, uh, right. And again, then, we were quite specific with our companies, both our companies, on, yeah. the, on the places to, to, to live in. Yeah, when choosing a career, so for, for example, if you choose an industry that is so booming in Africa, for yeah. instance, right, for instance, mm -hmm. but you can't expect to get that kind of support, mm -hmm. then well, you have a choice to stay in an industry or move to a different industry that support your personal goal mm -hmm. as well, right? So that's mm -hmm. a good, a clear indication or, mm -hmm. or a question mm -hmm. that you can ask. Well, it's a question of choice of industries as well. And when you're talking of Africa, right. mm -hmm. We have some friends working in the uh, oil industry, mm. and they are, you know, they are now posted in uh, Angola. Mm -hmm. It's less easy, for yeah. sure. There is yeah. no French school. There is no school <laughs> at all, by the way, and right. uh, and you know, it's more uh, adventurous. Mm -hmm. But again, talking about uh, what's important for them, mm -hmm. probably what was important for them was living an adventure. So, yeah, exactly. so in, the, in, in, the, in the set, in the set of criteria, in the set of, uh, right. of priorities, That's having, having a school was, was probably less important mm -hmm. than, uh, than uh, leaving something completely adventurous. Right. So that's also that it's a good chance to think about what's important for you. 
right? What's important? Adventure or mm -hmm. support, right? Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, please. 日本語ですいません、えっと、あのグロービスのマネジメントスクールに通っています岩井と申しますあの今の質問ともちょっと関連するんですけど日本人でグローバルに活躍しようとすると必ず出てくるのが日本人のアイデンティティが必要だとかあと日本語がきちんとしゃべれることが結構必要だって言われるんですがで今のお話でお子さんがフラあのフランスの学校に行かれてるっていうことがちょっと意外だったんですけれどもあのど,どのようあなんでフランス語の学校に子どもたちを入れてるのかっていうのがそういうフランスのアイデンティティがやっぱりグローバルで活躍する上で重要だと考えられているのかそれともあまりそういうのは関係なくてあの英語も早めに。環境があればやった方がいいのかとか、そういうなんかどういうふうに。はい、あでもすごい大事なクエスチョンですね。ありがとうございます。So the question, question was that so you send your kids to the French school, is that because you like to sort of develop their French identity, keep the language,、mm -hmm. or do you had a choice to send them to international school, brush up on an English? Because we always have this discussion as well, you know. Mm. Even if you're going global, you have to be a real good Japanese. You have、mm. to speak good Japanese language. You have to have this、mm. cultural you know, identity. So, is that something to do with your decision?、Um, I, I think、uh, French uh, language is like Japanese language, it's、mm. very demanding.、Mm. And you cannot do it、uh, halfway. Otherwise,、uh, mm. But you, all your life, you will write it with、uh, make mistake, and、okay. you will speak it not nicely.、Mm. And, um, and uh, besides, you won't be、uh, excellent in English as well.、Mm. So you might be half half. And、um, also, besides that,、mm. uh, uh, we, we do not consider like.、Uh, Uh, totally global people, like Alan said,、uh, we, we, do, we have only、uh, finally eight years abroad, so it's not much. And、uh, we do not know uh, what uh, the future would be for the kids if、mm. we have to go back to France.、Mm. Uh, unfortunately, in France, there are not so many international schools.、Mm. And then,、uh, if you have to catch up in, France, in French, it's very difficult.、Mm. So it was a choice.、Mm -hmm. It was a choice.、Uh, So it's a kind of safety net、mm. to,、yes. to, to be good at、mm. French things.、Mm. Because, well, being, being global as well, then you can be French anytime.、Mm. So, did, did, did this answer your questions? どうやって英語をあのフランスの方も結構フランス語しか喋らない方多いと思うんですけども、うん、どなんでそんなに英語ができるようになったのかって<笑>。Okay, so, and, and so how, how, do you, how, do, how did you pick up your English? So you speak very good English, but in France, like in Japan, what people are attached to original or local language?、Mm. The, no? no. Uh, I would not say、uh, that we, well, Alan speaks、uh, far better than me, but I, I wouldn't say that、uh, we speak very good English in,、uh, in France because、uh, we learn it、uh, pretty late. And uh, unfortunately, uh, our French system d o not put enough priority on languages.、Mm. Uh, so, contrary to Germans and Dutch people, we, we cannot speak、uh, the, the, the same uh, uh, quality.、Uh, mm. However, it's enough、uh, to communicate.、Uh, So, we consider that maybe it's better to, be,、uh, to have a perfect French when we write、mm. and when we、Native、speak.、French. And besides that, use English to communicate. For me, I, I have no problem,、mm. whatever、um, the, the, the people are. Just enough or to, to make reports. Or, 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 or,、mm. or, yeah. So, so we, we decided that it's better、uh, yeah, to, 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 to prioritize our mother language、mm. for the kids. And,、uh, And use English because we,、uh, mm. as a tool,、mm. even if we, we cannot、mm. make、uh, English literature when、mm. we write and speak. Probably, I think it's the common perception in Japan too. Well, Japanese language、mm. is a very difficult、mm. language to pick up, as、mm. you said. And then once you kind of lose the grip of、mm. it, it's hard to come back to、mm. the, the, the proper、mm. track. Yeah, it's very similar. The, I think many parents are very careful about、mm. that, right?、Mm. Very, very practical question.、Mm. Thank you. ありがとうございます。Mm -hmm. yes. Any other questions?、Uh, Darren? 
there are so many Globe students that mm -hmm. I, I kind of identify the names. I'm sorry, but hi. yeah. Hi. Well, th <laughs> thank you for the introduction, then. Yes, <laughs> Darren is famous. He's in the picture over there. Oh, he's there. He's ah, there. yes, I'm, I'm a poster Darren. boy for Globus, Yes, <laughs> um, and and yeah, and, and I was a student of Alan's class, excellent class. Thank you, Sensei. Um, <laughs> uh, but again, the issue about children. Um, your children, for both of you, have lived in maybe two, three, four countries now, uh, or they will when you move to the States. What's the greatest benefit you think they have got from this experience? Mm. Uh, uh, I think uh, they will be uh, always uh, open. Uh, we were talking about diversity. I think uh, they have um, um, uh, got uh, some understanding of a Japanese culture, even uh, if it's not complete, because they are kids. Mm. Uh, they, 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 they will uh, understand part of the American one. Uh, and uh, I think they will uh, feel maybe in the future like world citizen. And um, uh, for me, uh, it was very new to, 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 to travel with Alain, because uh, all my family, my parents, never wa ne nobody, uh, has uh, ever traveled for work, so it was very, very new. And for them, it will be natural, I think. Yeah. So I think it's a, it's a chance. Um. So at least they don't have any fear mm. going mm. foreign foreign places. Mm. No, and, and uh, practically speaking, they travel. Uh, they can travel alone uh, without any problem. I mean, <laughs> in a safe place. Yeah. So. Mm. Openness. A and then. There is this opportunity and there is a risk. And the, the, the risk part of it is uh, they, are become, they can become world citizen, but at the end of the day, world citizen is citizen of nowhere, mm. or can be citizen of nowhere. And we want also to make sure that they have some, uh, and also that's one of the reasons of the French school, that they have some, some roots, or that they have uh, at least one uh, rooted education about history, about culture, etc. And so we chose that they, they would be French citizen open to the world. Uh, we could have chosen, you know, that they would become uh, Japanese cultured open to the world. But uh, that, that's the risk, that at the end of the day, they, they just they have this uh, global culture, which is no culture. So we make sure that uh, we prevent that. Mm. Yeah, so it's important to have some, somewhere to come back to or... Mm. Yeah refer back to who you are, mm. probably. Yes, mm. they eat cheese and saucisson every <laughs> evening. <laughs> every day. <laughs> lucky. That's part lucky of it. Them. <laughs> lucky mm -hmm. them. Red wine, not yet, not every <laughs> evening, but. Uh. Very soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, the, you raise your hand. Uh, me too? Uh, thank you so much for the great session. Um, my name is Mitsu, and I, I used to, you know, uh, come go, come to you know Globis, and I uh, graduated Alumni. already. And uh, uh, I wanted to ask you, Alan, about uh, uh, taking risk. So you said, uh, so make choices, and you know, and give up on what's not essential. And uh, so i'm currently you know taking you know uh, risk and i'm starting my own business at the moment so i created my own company but uh but it was kind of based on more on you know i i, I was thinking a lot about you know uh, whether to you know make this choice or not At, you know the more I, th I thought you know the more i i got lost and so i depended on my you know more on my intuition rather than like you know of like you know, quantitative qualitative, I mean qualitative, you know, analysis. analysis. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm not sure if it's you know right right thing to do, you know, depending on you know my own intuition. But do you think? I mean, what, what's how do you you know decide to you know take the risk? How, is there any you know criteria? Or do you have any rules? Or do you you know is it your intuition? Or in, can you share? You know, you, thank you. I, I, I would be quite embarrassed to give you some advice because you are taking real risks, which we are not taking at the end of the day because we are working in the you know big corporation. So risk, of course, we change countries, uh, we change a little bit our balance, but at the end of the day, you know, we have the security of uh, a company, a job, etc. And you know, if, if you are starting your own venture, you are taking a real risk. So I won't, I, I won't give you any, I, won't, I wouldn't dare to give you any advice. You're taking real risk. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is, uh, you know, if you follow your intuition, uh, that's the best way to do. Huh? 
Don't, uh, no, 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 nobody will be more right than you about your own life, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you feel that that's the right thing for you, just do it. And uh, <laughs> you, have, you have only one life, huh? Oh, great. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's no. uh, yeah, the best, best uh, you know, advice I, I've heard. Yeah. Yes, so and w one big choice is obviously, uh, you know, working in a corporation or working as an entrepreneur, basically. And probably one of, uh, one of the criteria is freedom. What kind of freedom do you want to have? If you're really, I mean, again, looking, coming back to what's important for you, and uh, if freedom is a criteria number one, don't go to corporation. Create your own company. Because at one point, you know, working in big companies, of course, you can claim that you have freedom and you are an uh, entrepreneur within the company, but you are part of a big group, which is, which is our case. So, uh, okay, thank you so much. Mm. You're welcome. So how many questions do we have left? One, two, three? So maybe we can manage these three questions. Okay, let's start with the, the lady over there. Yes. Hello, um, my name is Yumiko Kamioka. I'm a US CPA and uh, uh, I'm, um, I'm an advisor, work life advisor of Yokohama City. Mm. And I also incorporated my own human resource management com uh, consulting company 10 years ago. Well, uh, I previously worked for the foreign affiliate bank and uh, at that time uh, my son was 10 years old. Uh, he's next sitting to me here. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I had to work much overtime due to, uh, because I belong to the human resource, uh, human resource department and uh, to integrate uh, the uh, company rules and system due to merger. So I really missed my son and uh, I was very uh, worried about him. That's why I told my son, uh, I told my boss, uh, I'd work very effectively within the working hour without uh, working overtime. But he refused, refused it. So I really, um, yeah, uh, I really strongly felt that uh, working life, uh, work life balance is very important for everybody because um, my, my friends or uh, many women considered, even though the annual salary become half of the current level, uh, they would like to work with less overtime work. Mm -hmm. So um, that result in our company's huge loss because uh, they will lose the competent employees. So um, I thought, uh, so my question is, as a top management of uh, the current company, uh, I, I would like to ask Mr. Bernard, what is the important factor to, cha to change uh, such boards or managers or management uh, chain, uh, mind to, so that they can promote the work and life balance in the Japanese company, uh, <laughs> regardless yeah, of the question. Japanese no, company. That's a, that's a yeah. I have a few ideas, yes, but... Yeah. Or maybe Gubi, you start. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> you start. Do you uh, have any idea? But you also said you, you well, he had, you, you said you have pro trouble sending your employees go, go home, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in a complete opposite situation where, uh, Probably that's as with, with, my, with my education and culture and background uh, and the French culture, which we talked about earlier, I'm the one encouraging, again, people to, uh, to stop working, uh, to, to, to not, to, not to work late, to come home, to take care of their families, etc. And even sometimes, you know, at 8 o'clock, I switch off the light. Uh, I don't want people to, to, to stay late. I hate overtime. We have a big policy to reduce over time, and it's not a question of money, it's a question of uh, just health. And I have, most of the time, in front of me, people who want to stay late, because that's, you know, that's the, that's the, way, that's the way they work, that's the way they were educated, and they, everybody feels it's, it's right, and that this way they feel really committed to the company, and if they don't stay late, they won't be uh, perceived as committed to the company. So we have the, the opposite <laughs> discussion. Uh, 
then your question is, you know, how to convince your boss. Uh, tell him again and again and again and again that is uh, that it's so important for you that uh, you know you can't do anything uh, anything else, and that uh, at the end uh, for you a, a way to be more performant. Uh, well, and if it doesn't work, at the end of the day, it's a question of belief. If you have somebody who doesn't believe believe in it. Change bus. Well, Change companies. No, but yeah. but yeah, but that's kind of uh, widespread concern uh, throughout Japanese companies. So, does anybody have any success story about changing the management attitude towards long hours or well, destroying work like that? Any success story? No. Yeah, you do. Ah, yes, please. I speak again. Well, I work in Takaratomi, uh, a toy Takara company. Tomi, the toy yes, company? a toy company. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are facing a very critical environment. Uh, maybe some of you, you know the, the story. They were beginning to cutting the people, employment. And I'm a mom at the same time. I have two sons, and I work uh, in this company for over 10 years. And uh, when I, you say, when I entered the company at the first, uh, I can understand why the people work overtime, why the people have to stay at a, stay at the office until it's very late. <laughs> and and uh, for example, my husband came home until ten o'clock or eleven o'clock p.m. Uh, uh, p.m. Yes. So at the beginning, I have to. Talked with my boss that uh, I can't I can't g take over take the time over time, but they won't uh, maybe they they will pro pro provide some rules. Okay, you can do that, but we cannot promise you they will get a promotions. But oh, I don't mind. I yes, but I don't mind. I don't I don't mind the promotions. I'm a foreigner and I keep talking talking talking, and it's so. Finally, I found the company is changing too because I work hard. Since I cannot finish the work uh, at the office time, but I can take overtime at home time. I work, wake up at the, you say, midnight to yeah, but did you finish trade my the chance of promotion for the overtime while well, not doing overtime? Did uh, you trade unfortunately, it? I don't think I got a promotion currently, but I think my boss do appreciate me mm. and uh, give men a chance to do more uh, challenging job. So, mm. well, I think... Yeah, I'm sorry to stop you, okay. but then uh, we had this discussion when we were preparing for it. But So is that the, the some companies see this work-life balance as like a nice fringe benefit, right? Like, if you, you know, it's like I'll give you no overtime, and that's a great benefit for you, right? Then that she has maybe there's a chance uh, some people has to trade the right not doing overtime for not getting any promotion. What, what do you think? What do you think? Unthinkable? Uh, in, uh, in, in L'Oreal, people uh, are very, uh, well, no, L'Oreal is very uh, focused on the uh, work-life balance mm -hmm. of the employees in order to keep them. In order, in order to keep them. To keep them. Mm -hmm. And uh, pe most people who start their career in L'Oreal, for example, mm. they, yeah, they will stay uh, mm. until maybe retirement because mm. uh, the company pay attention to that. And, um, mm. and I think uh, the, the company must take, uh, must take consciousness of this problem. If the people uh, are not well, they, 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 they cannot be well performing, if mm. they're not feeling well um, at work because they work too much, they cannot be as efficient uh, as uh, if they had, uh, for example, mm. limited uh, hours. And, um, and uh, I think people at L'Oreal uh, do not do uh, so much over work. But they used to produce outcome. And of course, they well, are. Well, your company is very profitable. It's like a very, really, very demanding profitable. company, so they work right. very cons focused, concentrated, right. but uh, they pay attention. And I mm -hmm. think the young generation, as I told you, mm -hmm. they have families, and it's important for them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, so um, 
Well, so, so uh, thank you, thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I don't know. Well, it's maybe too idealistic, but the Japanese people mm -hmm. love to follow rules, right? Mm -hmm. Right? They they like rules. So why don't we set up a rule to penalize management to mm -hmm. to stay at office or I mean for having their members staying late? Mm -hmm. Well, could that just prove that they are not that competent, right? The managing the workload mm -hmm. or managing the number of stuff, mm -hmm. um, then probably they'll follow. So I don't know whether that. that that's that's an, that's an option. By, by, by the rule. Something also ma which might change, mm. I hope, is that uh, the, the long loyalty of employees in Japanese companies, mm. the fact that you enter for life in a company, mm. and uh, that might change as well. Mm -hmm. and, and now he's talking about uh, limiting over time as a retention tool. Uh, that's also that could happen mm -hmm. in some Japanese companies mm -hmm. if uh, you know the employer sees that the employee are leaving the company mm -hmm. because that there is too much overtime. Yes. So yes, at, at the end, if the Japanese market or labor market become more compa uh, competitive, mm -hmm. then this could could change, right? Then to retain uh, good mm -hmm. employees, then you have to really make make it work mm -hmm. in a balanced way. So maybe it's the matter of uh, competitiveness of the Japanese workforce, probably. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it did, did answer your question, but so, but a very important discussion. Thank you very much. So I got two more questions, right? So maybe one now and then later for you, the last. Yeah. Yes. Uh, my name is Ryuya Fujisaki, working for Kanematsu Aerospace Corporation. あの、so his question was, so you, you move around different cities. How do you build the probably local connections, right? You spend almost all time after five for your kids, but then do you belong to any local community club or maybe sports club, any, anything local, PTA? Kenjinkai. <laughs> oh, well, well, maybe any other options that you have locally. Did you have any chance? Not that much. Not that, I'm it was afraid. A lower at your priority list, yeah. probably. Yes, mm. which is a regret. I mean, not to be more involved into a local community, for sure. Again, language is a barrier. I mean, mm. we are learning Japanese. We are still mm. learning Japanese enough to understand half of your question. Uh, but then to be really involved in the local community, uh, you need to be completely fluent. Um, hmm. well. That's a shame. Yeah. Like uh, having you know, great people like you too cannot join our local community, then that's really a shame for No, you. yes, we, we, we City like Tokyo. tried and uh, what, what I know is doing with the, the, the charity association in, uh, in Tohoku is uh, is a way to, is a way to participate in uh, with uh, you know it's little drop in the ocean uh, but a way to participate to the the rebuilding or at least to the, the comforting of uh, the, the population in Tohoku, but even that is uh, you know foreign supported association, hmm. foreign supported association. Yeah, but uh, with many uh, Japanese people, uh, so it's. Uh, mm. Yeah, af, af, even af, in a, through the French mm. French connection, <laughs> you still can tap into the Japanese community. Thank you. Good question. I think that if you're single, it's easier to to go into the local as well. Mm. Because yeah, great. So the last question, please. Bonsoir. Je m'appelle Serena. Oh. <laughs> Bonsoir. <laughs> a little bit of French. <laughs> uh, hi. Um, 
I work for a Japanese company, a uh, very stiff company, uh, dealing in male older. There's a lot of rivalry around among employees. And I was wondering um, how you two, being so successful and happy and accomplished in your life, have dealt with the negative feelings among your um, colleagues in your offices. If there's any tip how to deal with envy, jealousy, rivalry, <laughs> I'd like to know. Well, you seem to have a great company, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exciting, for sure. <laughs> you want to apply for Van Cleef Appel or L'Oreal, maybe? Ooh, can I talk later? <laughs> But this one is more for you. Huh? you Jealousy, rivalry, negative, no? No, I, uh, I don't think so. Everyone has his uh, own way, and there's not a way better than another one. Uh, mm. I think it's, uh, yeah, we had some opportunities, but maybe in our own country we missed things as well. Mm. Um, it's just a different choice. Mm. Well, maybe one particular case when you are dispatched to overseas, you have some sort of a difference between, well, someone who's sent from the headquarters and local talents, mm. right? That could be the uh, cause for jealous, jealousy. The, the ex exactly. I mean, um, two things to answer your question. The, the first one is probably we have the chance not to live so much like uh, negative uh, behaviors and politics and jealousy, etc., uh, because we work in foreign subsidiaries quite far from the headquarters, and because our businesses are successful. So basically, everybody has a share of the, of the, of the cake. Everybody can be happy with the company. Um, that's one. Then. Uh, rivalry uh, that can happen, especially as you said, Megumi, between foreigners and Japanese. And I think it happens. Uh, there are probably a lot of things that I'm, I don't see, but I can hear off a little bit uh, about jealousy, uh, French people having a better career than Japanese people with the company, having promotions, not promotions, etc. And that's why, you know, as, as a manager, I really need to be careful about this to make sure that to, to give complete fairness uh, to, um, to, to, the, to all the teams, to give uh, you know, the same number of promotions, uh, not to, uh, to give any favor to the French people. Having said that, probably at the end of the day, you know, I, I go and see more of my French colleagues and I speak French with them and uh, that, that's, that's the way it happens, for sure. Thank you very much. Uh, so I think it's coming to the end of the great seminar today. Uh, but I have one last question, so just quickly. So uh, as the, uh, from the managerial point of view, what is the great thing about having a global Korea employee? What's the value for a company? The value for a company or the value for, the, for us? Both or both? Then. Both. <laughs> um, I, I, I think, I mean, the, the value, probably the same, the same answer for the employee and for the employer. Mm. At the end of the day, uh, it, it allows the employer to have people like us who are probably more willing to take risks. Mm -hmm. And if we are more willing to take risks in our personal life, we can be also more willing to take risks in the business environment mm. and, of course, control risks. But we need to take, we need to take risks. I think we adapt well to change. I mean, we talked about change earlier. Um, the fact that, I mean, it gets, for us, it gets quite easy to move from one country to another, mm -hmm. to, to move from one situation to another. Uh, so I believe we have developed uh, um, skills in adaptation. Skills in adaptation. And, uh, you know, adaptation is not only uh, from one country to another, but adaptation to any uh, business change, adaptation to something happening, adaptation to March 11th, adaptation to anything. And uh, probably we have more acute in, mm. in, in, in this. So probably risk management, adaptation, mm -hmm. openness to, to diversity, as we said, mm. new cultures. Uh, which is never enough. I mean, I, we hope to be, we, we would have hoped to be more open to Japanese culture, but mm. it takes 
more than a life <laughs> to, uh, to understand uh, Japanese culture. But so probably, so it's a great advantage for us mm -hmm. as, as employees, as managers, to have, to have this, this career and to develop those skills. And for the company, probably it's great because they know that we can adapt from one country to another, that we are probably more so open. You, you build the trust and within the organization yes. for, for the, those skills. Thank you. And Anlo? Uh, I, I would say si similar. I think uh, by having a global uh, career like that, maybe we can uh, uh, facilitate uh, exchange also between people, uh, connection between people, mm. because uh, mm. by knowing everyone, uh, by uh, knowing the needs uh, everywhere, uh, we can, uh, yeah, we can uh, help uh, this connection. You can connect something in Paris and something mm -hmm. in Tokyo, New yes, York. Exactly. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, it's great. So thank you very much. This is going to be the end of two hour session. And so please give a round of applause to these two great uh, speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.